Good morning, everybody, and welcome to Wake Up Missoula. I'm your host, Scott Ramp. We have lots of stuff to talk about today. We got a summer series video entitled Fidget to Win It. We got some weather. We got some news items. Um, some of the news items include healthcare and the forest. Um, we also have um, art clips. We got some new programs that are going to be airing on the weekend, and I got some city council report. Mostly I'm going to be talking most of the time, but I have a couple of quotes during the uh, Public Works Commission meeting on Wednesday's uh, City Council Committee meeting. So let's kick it off with a little bit of weather today. It is currently 57 degrees outside. Your high is 84, your low is 53. Um, you can expect your Saturday to be pretty much the same thing, uh, but things are going to start heating up by Sunday. And then, of course, Monday you have that 20% chance of thunderstorms rolling in. So it seems like that little dip down in weather basically happened for the just perfect timing for the weekend so if you guys are planning on going out tonight tonight will be the night to go out it will be nice and cool but not too hot Saturdays can be nice and cool just about the same so you can expect great days to happen on s Friday and Saturday things are not going to get too hot until Sunday so let's let's talk about what's happening in the news so on Thursday at 10 a.m. yesterday uh, the natural uh, the National Museum and Forest Service history opened up um, our very own Ron Schell went there and got some footage of the ribbon cutting, which was joined by uh, Mayor John Engen, executive directors from the um, Forestry Museum, as well as um, County Commissioner Dave Stromeyer was there. I saw him uh, as one of the only museums in the country devoted to telling the forest conservation story of the United States. It shows that Missoula County cares very deeply about forests that are only a nice walk away from any for basically from any direction um, it may not it may not look much actually when you actually go there because when I was there there's a lot of open areas and it's like oh, okay so this is the Forest Service but there's not much forest in the general area but uh, what they make up in um, population of trees they make up in diversity um, part of what uh, what was unveiled Thursday and will now be open every day from 10 a.m. to 4 p.m. through Labor Day was the a uh, forest Discovery Trail that wound through the groove of champion trees. Of course, started in, in 2002, the groove consists of a couple dozen species of western and northwestern trees cloned from the biggest, toughest, and oldest specimens. It's one of the half dozen archival libraries of trees scattered across the nation, nation from Florida, Virginia, Michigan, to Salem, Oregon. So we join them in having the diverse of trees in terms of if you go on their l nice little walkabout trail, it's a nice little trail just adjacent to a lot of their visitor centers and stuff like that. And it kind of shows a little history and a little bit of information about some of the trees that basically make up um, the North American continent. In the state news, um, in recent news, a firefighter working to help out put out some of the fires has been killed when a tree fell on him. Um, Trenton Johnson, 19-year-old, had just finished a two-week deployment mopping up a fire in Utah. Um, a Forest Service ground crew had um, scratched out a preliminary containment line around the burning timber on Wednesday before Grayback crew arrived about 3.30 p.m. Everybody pulled together and assessed the scene and worked out a strategy to keep the flames from spreading. They went through the four-step protocol of setting up lookout, establishing communications, picking escape routes if fire conditions got radical, and reviewing general safety precautions. A burning tree near the meeting point broke apart and fell towards the group of four, which include Johnson's crew boss. Um, Johnson was the only one hit. He was still alive when he was hit, but by the time evacuation and airlift came for him, he, uh, by the time he w got to St. Pat's, he died about 5 p.m. Wednesday afternoon. A cruel reminder of the dangers folks put themselves in so we can enjoy our day-to-day -day lives living adjacent to forests. Um, in national news, on Thursday, the Senate unleashed yet another iter iteration of its efforts to repeal and replace the Affordable Care Act, also known as Obamacare. And with it came another anal analysis from the nonpartisan Congressional Budget Office with something that has been more than... Um, Infamous for being uh, last minute and a little input by um, the majority of Senate, both Republicans and Democrats. Um, um, but of course, some small remnants of the better health care bill continues. Um, with the original House, bear, House bill, American Health Care Act, bench warming since the Senate decided to take matters into their own hands, there still is a chance to repeal Obamacare overall. There are four ways the Senate can uh, effectively appeal, uh, repeal ACA. One way, they can use the American Health Care Act, they can use the American Health Care Act r first revision, 
or they can use the American Health Care Act revision, the second revision. But, um, and then of course there's the repeal only, which m most likely will not happen because the majority of senators, both GOP and Democrats, said that they will not support um, unless, I mean, well, in terms of the GOP, they would not, su um, a lot of them are interested in repealing the ACA, but only if there is a suitable replacement, which may not happen. So if they can't find a suitable replacement, it seems kind of pointless to have a repeal only for Obamacare, especially for this upcoming election for a lot of the House seats. So with many senators saying that they'd rather have a replacement, would probably not repeal Obamacare uh, without one of these three versions of the uh, American Health Care Act um, passing. So anyways, Senate leaders say that they want to start debate on the bill next week, but it is not clear w which legislation m might be destined for the Senate floor. Um, aren't loopholes great? So that's pretty much it, what's happening in the news lately. Let's talk, o let's talk about a little bit of new programming. Uh, we got a whole bunch of uh, MCPS uh, concerts that w have been put on in it's the part of their spring concert series. It's pretty much the last concerts a lot of these high school students did in their high school career. So we get a little taste of some high schools, but also we get a, a couple other lecture series and a couple other great things happening on MCAT this weekend to keep you guys busy and maybe cool, cool down a little bit. And you can watch this also online by logging on to MCAT.org. And I'll tell you a little bit more about that later in the show today. Um, but, of course, I'm going to show you guys the new programs on MCAT. When I come back, I'm going to talk about um, movies that are coming out this weekend with pre-critics. So please stay with me. anybody who cares about magnificent landscapes, ecological havens, and all the archaeological sites being looted and destroyed. I hope those of you who are as passionate about protecting these lands as I am are out there letting him know how crucial these places are to what this country supposedly stands for. This is by Robert Dawson. It's a reservoir in Rye Patch, Nevada. The American West, of course, has a drinking problem, as Pete Zrinka, as Roka put it. Water is a huge subject that leaks into almost every crack in undermining. They're predicting that by 2030, only 60% of the world's water needs will be met. A new study reports that the Colorado River, where my water comes from, has lost nearly 20% of its volume since 2000, partly due to drought, partly to climate change. 40 million people in two countries, US and Mexico, and seven states, including New Mexico, depend on that water. In July of 2009, Obama made a trip to Russia, gave a speech to the graduates of Moscow's new economic school, and urged the, the students there to stop viewing the United States as an adversary. He said, the assumption that Russia and the United States are eternal, ant eternal antagonists is a 20th century view rooted in the past. Um, in 2009, he said, great, great, a great power does not show strength by dominating or demonizing other countries. The days when empires could treat sovereign states as pieces on a chessboard are over. Um, an interesting theory that seems not to have borne itself out in practice. In September of 2009, uh, in an attempt to reach some sort of an accord with, with Russia, Obama halted the deployment of US mis missile defense in Eastern Europe that was actually 
uh, it was interfering with in relations with Russia was actually designed as a defense against Iran. Private sector. The private sector has definitely been expanding in my period of time there, and that's because there's been uh, there was a, a push for a number of years back in the late 90s and prior decade um, by Cuba um, to train physicians for St. Lucia. And so there was about 10 years where every year about 15 Lucians got to go to Cuba and go to medical school. It was a six-year program. They do not speak Spanish. It, they, they went back and forth between France and England 14 times, and the English were the last victors. So the first thing they had to do was learn Spanish, and they learned, med they learned medicine in Spanish. Um, so they came back to St. Lucia and without advanced training. So they completed medical school, but they, don't, they didn't get residency training. Hey guys, welcome back. Now it's time for a little thing I like to call Pre-Critic. Let's kick things off with a movie that's coming out this weekend that a lot of people are really hyped about. So yet another non-Batman film by Christopher Nolan as he goes back to the Battle of Britain in this World War II movie that will mostly be nominated for an Oscar because it has the key components of any Oscar nods are World Wars, um, an underdog, uh, someone who's usually it's a uh, hardworking uh, folks as well. But of course, the, um, but of course, you know, like it cannot be science fiction. That's one of the tropes. Is like, and it must be have good actors who have been nominated in the past. Anyways, see the director's take on a, a war from the perspectives of many types of people who are stuck in Dunkirk back when Germany was on their doorstep, Britain's doorstep. I mean, but if you look it up, Dunkirk. If you look up anything about Dunkirk on Wikipedia, you probably basically have the ending spoiled because you know basically what happens. Also, you know. You should know what's happening right now because, you know, history. <laughs> but anyways, moving on. Um, in this passion project from Luc Besson, the director of The Fifth Element and Lucy, comes a fifth element type of word, world where two human, good-looking folks come together to save the universe. Valerian and a city of a thousand planets stars insert here actors and plenty of aliens that will make you go, whoa, hmm, cool. But while you are so invested in the fake alien creatures, the director puts so much detail into follow two humans who just happen to be actors. Up next, we got uh, Queen Latifah is back, or she's never really left, or she's just kind of done small movies, and I don't know, she has, she has an arc. She has a very just like, oh, she has some great movies in, and then there's like, oh my god, it's Queen Latifah, and then like she stars in a movie, and it's like, oh god, it's Queen Latifah. It's, that's kind of how it is. But anyways, uh, watch Girl Trip, a raunchy comedy that follows a group of women who go on a sexual hedonistic adventure across where uh, they have plenty of laughs and sass and the only, uh, you know, they have some good actors in it who could do like uh, Jade Peek and Smith's in it. Um, sometimes when you've been acting a long time, it gets to the point where you throw caution to the wind and try some comedy out. Well, good luck, people. Uh, so that pretty much is everything you guys need to know about some terrible movies. And I have another um, interesting movie um, <laughs> made by some kids from our week-long um, animation camp. It's called Fidget to Win It. And when we come back, I'll talk a little bit. We'll have something special for you guys. So I was, I was looking at it and I was So I saw this arena here and I thought it was pretty cool because it's like this car crash and like laser jumping. Really? I, I, like I was talking right crash. here and there's arena too. Yeah. Sirs, if you will not be quiet, I will have to ask you to leave the library. I'm sure many of us are either trying to read our books or finish our paperwork. Library. Okay. Um, sister? Sorry. Um, do you know where the books on geology are? Would you like me to show you? Um, sure. That'd be great. Of course. Are you looking for books on earthquakes or perhaps... So over here are the geological landforms. The second file cabinet behind that one references to prehistoric times. I think you'll find what you need. Okay, thanks. Someone is the gatekeeper. 
gatekeeper, and I am the gatekeeper, so I have to come with you. This seems awfully made up on the spot. Just saying. Yeah, I didn't, and I can't remember everything, and I'm kind of antisocial here. Well, that's obvious. closed or past normal hours. Okay. Get out as soon as I can. Thank you. So will I. Is that really all the dream? Hey guys, we're back here with uh, Josh Cook here. He's Hello. been playing some music for us. He's just get, kind of getting set up. We're kind of getting all rushed, so you know, you try setting up a whole entire sounding oh, system yeah. within five minutes. <laughs> it's tough, man. Yeah, and this isn't even like a complicated sound system. This is like uh, some speakers on my laptop. <laughs> you know, yeah. the only thing that gives me trouble sometimes is uh, the program that I use. You know, it, it likes to just sometimes mix up every single uh, note that I place down. So what um, software are you using? I'm using FL Studio. Um, it's kind of like GarageBand, but for PC. Nice. But, um, you know, it's got a lot of options uh, as far as, like, musical creations. So I'm gonna open up a project that I've been working on. This is, um, it's kind of like a jazz hip hop beat. Okay. All right. And um, what I did with this is make I made something that I could um, 
solo with, you know, do jazz improvisation. So I'm just going to set up my MIDI keyboard here, yep. or the MCAT's MIDI keyboard. <laughs> I've had it for so long that I've just kind of like... Have you been playing with it and kind of working with it? Yeah, yeah, for sure. What's your favorite part of it? This keyboard? I like the pitch bend blend. Oh yeah, it's pitch really bend cool. is great. Um, I don't know if this cord is going to work, but it's I can... It's in and ready to go, it looks like. Yeah. Well, let me plug in these speakers and I'll give you an idea of like the beat that I have been going for. Okay. Let me make sure this isn't too loud. Yeah. sometimes holds out keys all right and just plays them for like five minutes really yeah so what I do to fix that I guess this is kind of turning into like a home repair thing yeah. here's how you fix your MIDI keyboard you just uh, restart your computer and uh, hope for the best if not, I can play some MP3s that I have of the songs. Um, now Windows is coming. <laughs> Let me explain to you. Okay, um, yeah, please. Let me tell you about this computer I bought. <laughs> okay. All right. I bought a Toshiba computer, and it turns out that Toshibas kind of suck. <laughs> so uh, we're not smart about Toshiba. You can badmouth them all you want. Oh, okay. Yeah. They're terrible. <laughs> they're they really they really stink. Okay. <laughs> you know. I mean, like it's kind of interesting when you like uh, are watching like a tech, um, you know, people who like review tech people. Yeah. And then they get sponsored by a certain tech group, and then they never badmouth that tech person ever again. Right. So yeah. Well, I, Canon's pretty. Yeah. Yeah. I don't. I don't like when that happens because. Yeah. Then they like, have to. Then they. They basically sound hesitant. Yeah, because you want honest. You know, opinion from from your you know your channel or somebody that you're watching, right? Yeah. But if they're sponsored by a person, you can't trust their opinion because they're like, them. what if somebody's sponsored by like you know Toshiba, right? And they get this laptop that that doesn't start up, and uh, and they're just like, oh man, this laptop's great, and then a bunch of people go out and buy that yeah. product, you know. And then even for my show, like there, there's some restrictions I I can't necessarily do for the most part. Right. Like you know I, I'm not necessarily able to badmouth Charter Communications. Oh. Or you know like the city of Missoula and all that stuff. Right. Right. Because this is Waco, Missoula. Yeah. Well, I mean I'm just supposed to like give uh, like highlights of what's going on in Missoula and yeah. what's kind of doing what's going what's uh, what's on the beat of the town and all that stuff. Yeah. I missed the first part. Is there anything interesting happening? No. Well, uh, so the, they open the uh, natural. Uh, um, Museum of Forest Service History. Oh, really? Yeah. When it was really funny because I actually was there, and then me and Ron actually was like, Ron, what are you doing here? And he's <laughs> like, Well, I'm here to shoot it. He's like, Oh, I didn't know you're here to shoot it. And I was like, Okay. So I ended up being there, and it was like he was there too. But it was really interesting because first, uh, a museum that talks about history of um, National Forest Services. Yeah. There was not many trees. Really? Yeah. It was just it kind of it was like. It's like you probably have more trees in the university district or near Hellgate High School than you would see at the museum itself. Huh, that's, that's <laughs> odd. <laughs> but apparently they have a whole like walkabout where you can walk through and just like see all, all sorts of trees. It's It, it makes up in diversity. Oh, okay. Yeah, you know... Uh, Rather than, you know, quantity. Yeah, my brother uh, David is kind of into the forestry stuff. He might find that interesting. Mm -hmm. Oh, hey, you know what? I think I got the piano to work properly. Cool. Sweet. Wanna rock this? Yeah, let me uh I'll step aside and we can get I can get some camera movements going on here. Oh yeah. You can do like some DJ, you know, like in the middle of the mosh. Yeah. Every concert I've gone to, there's been that one guy with a camera who like goes right in the room and does a little camera <laughs> shake. Okay. You all ready to go? 
Yeah, let me just uh, open up the right project. And there we go. That's a little, let me pitch that down. Do you know what that sound is from? No. It's from Mega Man. Oh! Yeah, Super Nintendo. <laughs> it's uh, a little retro effect that I put in there. Alright. Let me turn down the speed. And we'll get started. So that's the improv song that I've been working on. Uh, I might have to balance some of these audio channels. That one, um, I plan on putting like some lyrics to it once I get the beat perfected, you know. Alright, and now we'll check out, um, let's see. My names for these songs are completely ridiculous and I come up with them just randomly. So this one, let's see. Uh, use this one. We call I called it Cooler Beans because the first one I uh, named was called Cool Beans, and I didn't like that name. And the project turned out bad, so I changed it. Changed it all entirely. All right. I added applause in the beginning of this one because I figured I, I could use a little bit. All right. Scott agrees.
Really everything I, uh, one more? All right, everything I do is a work in progress, right? So, I'm always working on these, you know, making them a little bit different, making them a little bit better every time. I haven't released any of these yet, but uh, later this week I'm gonna put some on SoundCloud to kind of gauge the reaction and uh, see how it turns out with lyrics and such. This one I wrote is kind of a uh, summertime jam. Something bright with a good beat. And uh, that one got messed up. That one was completely destroyed by my program. Let's try a different one. Summertime jam has been jammed. Alright, let's see. Oh, here's a fun one. All right, this one, um, this one I just made a video game soundtrack. All right, this is just a video game boss theme that I made in one day uh, with some Mega Man X sounds. So here goes. forever so I won't put you through that but uh, I'd like to thank Scott for letting me show off my music here on the show and uh, yeah thanks for having me putting up with my Senior Corps at Missoula Aging Services is Missoula's volunteer hub. Hundreds of volunteer opportunities await. You can help improve reading skills, school attendance, and the well-being of students, provide services that help older adults, or find out about countless other opportunities that will capture your interest. Because your heart's desire never ages, now is the time to reinvent yourself. Discover your perfect volunteer opportunity by calling 728-7682. Sorry about that, guys. That was a little uh, problem with the audio. Uh, moving on, um, what I was just talking about right there, where you see me mouth, my mouth moving for no apparent reason, is that the city was talking about expanding the Clark Fork River Market, which was um, approved. Um, one of the things that they were talking about is like they didn't want to expand it too far over encroaching on the Patty Street's cul-de-sac area because a lot of people in their cars use that to turn around. So uh, they don't want to kind of like block that and then people would have a hard time getting out so that's kind of what they discussed during public safety and health uh, meeting the admin and finance committee was talking about uh, some um, bylaw property owners are responsible to clear snow out and ice from their walks but of course this summer there's no worry about snow or anything like that but of course this past winter the city received a number of complaints about snow and ice on sidewalks located in the public right away you know the sidewalks that are just adjacent to the properties those have to be cleared out for p public right away otherwise you get a tickets upwards of two three hundred dollars if you don't clear those out so just be aware of that um so th they were talking about this um they uh of course the um, let's see here. Let's go through all this stuff. Um, they outlined the notice. They talked about this a little bit more. And of course, there's some properties that uh, basically are just owned and not managed. A lot of ways that people figure out ways where they can um, hire uh, city officials to kind of do this. And so they were talking about uh, the total value of certain assessments of this. Uh, but of course, the assessment was fairly low. The total value of assessments was $560. Uh, the SARS walks 
to be cleared in the 2016-2017, um, not counting the violations. Um, usually the um, costs of not clearing out the sidewalks are way more than it would be if they were basically paid for, which usually is that small sum of $560 of the 2016-2017 year. Um, John Wilkins, he talks about the options of clearing out the sidewalks for some of the folks, and this is what he had to say about that. University, and I think of the neighborhood uh, farm with Jane, that if they're an older people or something, that they can call them and uh, get get the sidewalks moved if they, they're clean, if they have all right, so um, that was just a quick little thing, um, uh, but I w I'm going to kind of expand on that. Uh, there are a little, there are pr definitely options out there to uh, contact the University of Montana because they do have uh, things that allow uh, the uh, even on um, a meeting that I did last week where they talked about the University of Montana ambassadors, neighborhood ambassadors particularly, who they kind of get to volunteer to help clear out some of the sidewalks for some of the elderly folks in the university neighborhoods or any neighborhoods which they have um, students as well. Michelle Kerr, she talks about the past year's um, snow season and they're expensive. So here is Michelle Kerr's. Just be interested to know how many we charged because we know that last year was a really difficult snow year and um, even yesterday at the Franklin to the Fort General meeting, we talked about snow plowing, and it's like 100 out. So people are still reeling from the snow season we had last. Um, but that's just me. I do believe that the um, exhibit shows the percentage of, of how many people paid and how many people didn't pay. Mm, 84.78. 46 total violations. Thanks. That's easy. All right. In All right. So that was kind of like the total val um, um, problems with you know how many people don't clear the sidewalks. It's pretty low. It's in the double digits. So it's not a, a big thing, but it's just kind of something that they're talking about right now, um, which I always found kind of interesting because when I was looking at it, it was just like, why are you talking about snow removal in the summer? But then again, um, it's just one of those things that a lot of um, finite details have to be kind of taken care of because this is the budget season. Okay. So let's talk about some public works committee. They're talking about some stormwater utility district. So the contract will involve an evaluation of the existing and future systems needs for stormwater division. The facility plan will, will focus on a near-term priorities to assist the city in planning for utility operations needs and improvements over the five-year period through 2022. Expected deliveries include a levy system operations and maintenance plans, a capital improvement plan to address known capacity and deficiencies, and stormwater utility management recommendations. The cost of the contract with Morrison Marley uh, for the uh, stormwater facility, I'm, I'm pretty sure I botched that last name, but um, operations planning project will not exceed $115,114 and will be funded using the stormwater funds. And that money is going for five years. That's going to be a five-year money for that $115,000. And of course, the money will go to the same project and future grants um, as well for the five years. Um, many of the underwritings and many of the expectations for grants awards can get as high as $500,000 in terms of grants. So in a lot of ways, the city of Missoula ends up saving money and having a gain from there. So that's basically kind of what's happening with your city council report. I'm going to talk a little bit about um, some events that are coming up later in the show, but let's kick some, th let, but here's some art clip. Here is an art clip from the Mizzou Art Museum of some of the art that's happening uh, courtesy of Maggie um, Hiltner. <laughs> Thank you. 
Hey guys, welcome back. Let's talk about some events that are happening in and around Missoula. Today is the 21st of uh, July. It's a Friday. Um, just a reminder that um, tonight is the uh, last day of animation camp, and at 5 p.m. we're doing a live show um, for the kids where they can show off all the videos they've done this week, um, both live action and stop animation. Um, you can find out more, and you can also watch online by logging on to MCAT.org. MCAT.org is a great place where you guys can watch and stream any of our shows that air on MCAT. You can go to channel 189, and it brings you to a, a search engine. So the most recent videos are posted up um, first and foremost from left to right. Um, each row is a new uh, program that's on there as well. So you guys can get access to any of the shows right now. Um, as you can see, Wake Up Missoula is live right now. So it is a great resource. But also, if you want to find out more information about Wake Up Missoula, you can log on to wakeupmissoula.wixsite.com slash wakeupmissoula. So nice we made you write it out twice. Be sure to like us on YouTube, like us on Facebook, and follow us on Twitter. Anyways, uh, let's talk about events. So here's what's happening in Missoula. Artists in Paradise. The Paradise Center uh, in Sanders County Art Council is uh, delighted to announce the dates for their fourth annual Artists in Paradise. You can join them starting um, actually yesterday until the 22nd, so tomorrow. It's 10 a.m. to 4 p.m. and then of course you can see a variety of um, um, original art by Sanders County artists. Um, and visit the artists. Many of the artists will actually be there and uh, have prints and other items featuring their work. This um, The new this year is the uh, addition to the featured artist. To kick off this feature for them to use Ma Brown, Ribbons of Wrath Drum, um, Idaho, and formerly of Hot Springs. I mean, you can join them for an acquaintance or meet a delightful lady and enjoy her beautiful art. So that's what's happening in the Paradise Center in Sanders County. Tiny Tales at Missoula Public Library. It's for birth to three years of age. If you have a kid, a toddler who's beginning to walk, why not learn, have them learn to, uh, well, talk? <laughs> And uh, kids learn nine new words a day, so it's a great way to get them exposed to all sorts of words at a library. Hmm. Libraries have lots of words. So, hot and cold. Um, this is, I'm not talking about the show, I'm talking about uh, a, a, dis a Spectrum Discovery event that's happening at Spectrum Discovery area. It's 812 Tool Street. It's hot and cold where they uh, basically are going to engage in exhibits and activities there. Um, Kids table at the library, so if you're 18 and under, you can get a free lunch at the Missoula Public Library at 11.30. They do this through the USDA, and it's a great uh, resource for anybody who wants free food. And it, and it goes through. Actually, by getting free food, you also allow the Missoula Food Bank to get even more food to, feel, to feed some of the hungry kids in Missoula. So even if you don't need it, it also, every number counts. So that's what I've um, seen. Okay, so Snow White and the Seven Dwarfs. MCT is putting on a show, Snow White and the Seven Dwarfs. Uh, there's two different shows at 4 p.m. at 6 p.m. Um, sometimes they have such a large cast of kids that do these MCT camps, and a lot of times they split them up into two, two different groups, which they perform at 4 p.m. at 6 p.m. And they are going to do that at the MCT tonight. It's going to be great. Um, and they're usually an hour-long performances. So um, you have a town float Fridays. So at Silver Park, they get, gather together, and they get on a shuttle, and they shuttle you up the river, and they basically let you say, hey, go float. And that's what they're going to do. Silver Park at 5 p.m. You can meet there. Um, and then you can, you know, you bring picnic and do all sorts of stuff. Silver Park is a great place to go and hang out. It's a brand new park. It's beautiful. And they're going to have a shuttle to show you um, anybody who's interested in floating can go floating at 5 p.m. Um, there's the Salt Mine Art Group Summer Party, Gallery 709 inside M Montana Art and Framing. And I just got to give a shout out to my uh, my boy, um, Steve Glukert, who is a who does Look Before You Speak With Me. I produced that show with him, and he hosts that show. And um, he hosts, um, and he also interviewed uh, the uh, curator at Gallery 709. So he's doing a uh, coloring book and painting activities will be there. It happened from 5 to 8 p.m. in the, um, s it's basically Salt Mine Artists. Um, artists are Bev and Steve Glukert, um, Caitlin uh, Mal Mallory, Peter Kiefer, Edgar Smith, and Kathleen uh, Ploy. Sorry, I'm like butchering every single name I look at. Um, Mountain Dance Fest and Concert. University of Montana is doing a dance concert to culminate the MDF 2017 featuring uh, Gerald Cascade. Ver, uh, Gerald Castle Dance. 
Um, it's all like one big long word, but it's like three different words kind of smushed together. But of course, it's happening um, tonight and tomorrow at 7.30 p.m. So you can check that out. It's the Mountain Dance Fest in concert at the University of Montana. I believe it's in the Denison Theater, uh, also known as the University Theater. That's kind of what's happening for your Friday. Here are some of your musical events that are happening Friday night as well. If you're interested in um, monks uh, learning um, hip hop and dance, you can go to Monk's Bar and get all sweaty and disgusting at Dizzy Wright Live. Uh, I don't know. I have like a thing against Monk's Bar for some reason. <laughs> uh, then you got a uh, Dirty Revival at the Top Hat Lounge. It's funk music. So you guys can check that out. It's going to be a great time tonight. There's usually not a lot of things going on Friday night because a lot of people are, like to do things Saturday morning because there's always a lot of things happening on Saturday, which I will get to. Farmer's Market. All those markets, Farmer's Market, People's Market, and Clarkford River Market is happening from 8 to 1 p.m. tomorrow. Um, you got the River Float Shuttle day so as if silver park 5 p.m tonight isn't good enough you can go start off the day with some floating at 10 a.m at silver park you can bring your inner tubes small rafts um all sorts of things to silver parks and then they shuttle you up the river it's great you can, if you want to do it you can do it uh they have a last run at 7 p.m so basically it's going to be a bunch of shuttles going up and through so you don't actually have to start at 10 a.m you can start pretty much any of the day, but shuttles start, stop at 7 p.m. So it's a great way to help um, not leave your cars out in certain areas and be like, I'm going to leave my car here. And then you, when you come back, your car's towed and it's like, where's my car? And then you're kind of stuck. So just be aware that um, sometimes, you know, a lot of people uh, put their cars up there and it's usually it's like takes two cars to um, go tubing. So one of the things that you guys can do is take a shuttle and they do that Silver Park pretty much all day. So I don't want to harp that on that anymore. Saturday, fun, family, f art, uh, sorry. I, everything is like family fun all day. So anyways, Saturday Family Art Workshop tie-dye t-shirts at the Missoula Art Museum. Missoula Art Museum hosting a tie-dye so you can bring a clean white t-shirt and dye master Aaron will show you how to create a colorful uh, flow, flowing masterpiece. Saturday Family Free Workshops enjoy an opportunity to work with your children on a, a creative project. Older children may delve into projects on their own but parents can, are asked to stay and work with their children under the age of seven years old. Uh, termite Skyscraper, if you're interested in bugs and stuff, Missoula Insectarium, Missoula Butterfly House um, is doing a termite skyscraper and you get to learn a little bit about the um, Zimbabwe um, termites and that's modeled after the African termite mound. Come find out what takes uh, take a tour of termite mode anytime between 12 and 2. Um, you got Dancer's Delight, Belly Dance Workshop. So if you're interested in learning to do some belly dancing, 12 p.m. of the Downtown Dance Collective. It's from noon to 3. And you do dancing to live music with uh, Aisha Azar and Safar at, for $75. <laughs> um, yeah, just all sorts of, it's just belly dancing. I mean, like, there's probably more to it than what I'm saying, but, you know, for me, it's just belly dancing. Um, wow dance swing class, th more dancing um, at 2 p.m. at the Missoula Fencing Association. When you're not fencing with swords, you guys can go out and do some wow dancing for swing classes from age 15 to 22. And yeah, I mean, yeah, you can go there, sign up. Um, you can call them at 424-276-8879. Uh, so uh, <laughs> that's a little... That's a lot of numbers. But of course, um, yeah, Wow Dance Swing Class, Missoula Fencing Association. Big Sky Barbecue at Karis Park. If you're interested in doing some barbecue, join the Missoula Food Bank Network in Karis Park on Saturday, July 22nd. Um, they have barbecue hamburgers starting at 4 p.m. in this most lip smacking drill worldly barbecue in town. Will be available Burn Street Bistro, Montana Q, Bad Betty's Barbecue, Notorious PIG. Barbecue, Bitter Bison, Dickie's Barbecue, Covered Wagon, Hot Dogs, and more. That's just a lot of just barbecue happening all that day, and you guys can enjoy that at Karis Park at 4 p.m. And um, that's pretty much it for just kind of like events. There's so much going on on your Saturday. I'm just looking at the time. Um, here are some of your uh, Saturday night events. You got Day by Day and Seidel um, is going to be rock music at Monks. You got Absolutely with Cruise Moon at, at the Badlander. And you got Karaoke at VFW. And you got uh, Silicone, no, Slocan Ramblers at Top Hat Lounge. Um, and that's going to be rock music. So that's kind of what's happening in your Missoula area this weekend as well. Um, once again, you can always find out more information by going to wakeupmissoula.wixsite.com slash wakeupmissoula. It's a great place to get con in contact with me. It's, and it's also a great avenue for, to, to like and subscribe on YouTube, Facebook, and follow on Twitter. Uh, you can also go to mcat.org for all your MCAT needs. Uh, our orientation is every second Wednesday of the month. You can rent equipment from MCAT for your own leisure. Um, um, but yeah, that's pretty much it 
for my morning show. I want to thank you all for joining me. I want to thank Josh Cook for joining me on this morning. Um, you can um, find him on SoundCloud under, what was the name? It's Captain Cook, so you can go to Captain Cook. So he's still kind of here, just hanging out in the back, just watching me, plotting, doing something. All right, so for uh, without further ado, uh, I want to thank everyone um, for joining me this morning, including you, Josh. And um, for Wake Up Missoula, I'm Scott Ramph. Mm-hmm.